All right, it's time to start on our S14. So this is going to be our lunar car, bit of a track hack to begin with. So we just pulled the AC off the SR20. So now zip down the Repco and get some degreaser, give this block a good clean up. We just pulled off the transmission, his third gear is pretty bad and we've found this sexy HKS twin plate clutch. Oh that's good. So we actually ended up buying a 5 speed gearbox that came with the S14 rolling body. Um, it had a few bits wrong with it so that went up to Casper to get rebuilt and it was much cheaper to have that 5 speed rebuilt than getting the 6 speed rebuilt. Welcome back to the uh, workshop guys, so we've got the transmission back from Casper, big thanks to Mike, top notch job and excellent delivery time on this 5 speed transmission and rebuild. So I just went to go bolt it back on, turns out the 6 speed flywheel is much thicker than the 5 speed and just having a look at the clutch, she's pretty thin. Ah, so new flywheel and clutch. It's a bit of a bugger because I was hoping to get this bolted back together and dropped into the S14. So I got the S14 up on axle stands. I've pulled out the rear subframe. And one thing I did notice, I saw some nice new black paint. Oh, someone's had a bit of a go at welding this in here. Got a bit of bird shit with some RTV pushed up in there. Beautiful, but it's solid enough and I'm going to be doing solid subframe bushes, so there shouldn't be any movement. But when we do a roll cage on this down the track, we'll probably do it properly. So we've degreased our subframe, cleaned up the holes to set our new solid aluminium bushes. So we're just going to bang these into the subframe, bolt our diff on, we're going to replace these bushes with solid mount bushes as well, and whack the subframe back in. So after our flywheel and clutch debacle this evening, we have achieved something. We've installed our solid mount subframe bushes, diff bushes. Um, I'm going to go down the road and get some new high tensile bolts for these because I've got a whole lot of random nuts and bolts, all different sizes that someone's put in there before. So I'm going to go get one size all new high tensile bolts for the axles to the diff and then I can slap this back into the chassis and then we'll just be waiting on the clutch as soon as we've got the clutch and flywheel we can finally get the transmission onto the motor and I was thinking about making some solid engine mounts but we might do that at a later date. Not too sure yet. The clutch and flywheel finally showed up, so I was able to assemble them, and the motor and gearbox went into the car. 
Also got stuck in fabbing up some front and rear bolt-on bash bars. And ended up pinching the 5 stud front hubs off the S15 as the S15 is a wee way away yet. So a bit more progress on the S14, we've almost finished the front bash bar, just need to put another reinforcement from this point back onto the chassis rail and then it's ready for sandblasting and painting. Need a mounted bracket here for the boost controller and vacuum solenoid thing and sort out a little bit more of the wiring on this and we'll be good to go on this and I've swapped over all the adjustable arms and links on the front and rear of the S15 so we can dial in the alignment so yeah hopefully next week this should be running And tomorrow I'm going to be starting on the trailer. Tomorrow. Time to take the car across the road to our local dyno expert, Cullen, who worked his magic and checked all the air fuel ratios, and we had a look to see how much power the SR20 was putting out. up a quick little dash panel 
to hold our boost controller and I'll show you in a minute. So we're just gonna bend this bit of stainless to that. Just a quick little rough jobby. So this will sit in here to hold our boost controller and our piggyback computer and defi gauge. Hujima what's it? Ew. Got a sexy little gear knob we've machined up. Feels very nice actually. We've got our cheap drift button. You just drill a hole and wind in the screw and she works a works a treat. So we'll just fab this here up. We're just gonna sit in there like that. If I can get it in there. Should do the job. We have a cutout here. And then we'll have the FCON Pro in there with Defi gauges and then the uh, boost controller on top. And we'll make a bracket up to go around this. And then we'll probably just do some um, button head screws. Hold the bracket in there. And we'll cut some holes in here for our window uh, toggle switches. Alright, so we've just folded up our um, bracket to hold our, our bits and bobs. See how it fits, eh? Bit hard with one hand. Oh, that's not too bad. Bit loose up around the top, but by the time we pack it out with some double sided sticky tape, should be good as. And then we'll um, bend up some flanges that we'll weld onto the sides here. Come out with a hole with a nut in it which will bolt onto our stainless surround centre console bit. Alright, so we've cut that out and cleaned up the foil. Got it all nice and smooth. Not bad, pretty good. I guess to get it sitting properly how we wanted it, we'd have to modify the dash bar. So that can wait until we <laughs> do the roll gauge. But that should be alright for now. Um, I just need to drill the holes for some toggle switches for the uh, windows. And there we have it, the finished surround thingy. It's only sitting in there at the moment, but yeah, it should do the job for now. I suppose better turn around and see if uh, I got everything plugged in right in. Then I had to swap over the clutch master cylinders from the stock 5 8 inch Nissan one to a 3 quarter inch aftermarket one. The standard Nissan line was a M10 by 1 thread. I couldn't seem to find the correct threaded fitting, so I ended up cutting up an old Nissan master cylinder. So I had the M10 by 1 thread, which I welded onto the end of the new master cylinder. Also had to replace the exhaust manifold gasket and the turbo flange gasket. They were both leaking pretty bad.